So, this is a typical setup for an interview. A couple of cameras, a couple of angles. One is a wide one, the other one is a telephoto one, and it gives us a couple of advantages. The first one is that we can cut between them if the talent makes mistake or he needs a pause that is too long, we can cut between them and thus conceal this mistake or a pause. And secondly, it is a little bit more engaging to watch a couple of angles rather than just one. But once we get to the color grading part, we're going to encounter a little problem. We need to color match these two cameras. And because we are not rich, we are indie filmmakers, typically we have not identical cameras because those are expensive. Typically we have one camera that is really good and one camera that is at best mediocre. So right in front of me there is Canon 1DX Mark II that is capable of recording Rec. 709 8-bit footage, which is set. And that camera is Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro that is capable of recording 6K 12-bit footage in RAW. So how do we match those two cameras? It's going to be kind of difficult. And before we get to matching those cameras, we need to talk about something. And that is the maybe the only rule that we need to follow is we need to match everything and we need to develop the look only using our worst camera because it is going to be possible to match a better camera to the worst one but matching worst one to the best one is going to be either really really difficult or it is going to be impossible just imagine a situation when your main camera is Arri Alexa and your B camera is like something like that, like Canon 1DX Mark II. That is like an impossible scenario, but nonetheless, it is going to be impossible to match this camera to that one if the look is developed in the better camera. So let's get to DaVinci Resolve and then let's try to match these cameras. But first, we're going to develop the look using our worst camera. So let's open DaVinci Resolve and let's match our clips. I already done that. I moved uh, clip number one and clip number two away from the main timeline, from the main like uh, set of footages. And let's try to match them. We are going to match them before we apply our look, because this way is going to be much, much easier. Let's go to the color page. Uh, with the worst camera, we're not going to do anything. Everything is supposed to be done with the better camera. So let's move to the next clip and we create only one node that is called balance. Here is what we're going to do. We're going to click on this little thing, which is called split screen. And we're going to select mode that is called selected clips. Let's open clips. Let's with the control, we're going to select the second clip. Now we've got both of those clips. Let's zoom in a little bit. What is going on? with my cat. I have no idea. So we are zoomed in. So we're going to judge uh, all of that based on our, on our scopes, our parades, our vector scope and so on. So first, we're going to deal with the parade. Let's disable the node. This is what we had before. And this is what we ended up with. Now, before we proceed any further, let's look at our color management. You can copy all of that. This is the color management that I typically work with. I select DaVinci RGB Color Manage, custom, and set everything manually. This is how I typically do what I do. You can pause it in here. You can copy if you really need to, but this is the, uh, the settings of the color management. Now, what did I do within this node? I try to first match the contrast. So I moved the shadows, the midtones and the highlights in the right spot. Then I moved to the color bars and I disabled the Luma mix. My cat is a little bit crazy. No, it's it's really crazy. Yeah, something is wrong with my cat. Anyways, I disabled Lumamix. Uh, why did I do that? I explained in the NF video. If you want to watch that, link will be in the description. And I subtracted some parts from the gain, from gamma, from lift, introduced some of the color based on the this Luna IOK. 
Is everything fine? Are you satisfied with the life that you live here in my house? Okay. So on the left, we've got a reference frame and on the right, we've got the frame that we want to readjust. So move back and forth, uh, judge by the peaks. As you can see, it is not uh, a, an exact copy. It is not an exact match because no matter what you do, those colors will be slightly different. Those, the contrast will be slightly different because the cam cameras are different. Also, I'm being lit with the natural lighting that is going to change throughout the scene. So these parameters are going to change no matter what you do. So you just have to get them in the like, relative position. And what I mean by relative position, we can see that our red is a little bit higher, just a little bit than the green one, green one and our blue one is really, really uh, dropped below the green and the red portion. So this is what I did. The red part is almost aligned with the green part and the blue part is dropped uh, lower compared to these ones. Maybe we have to increase it like this and maybe we can add a little bit of red into our uh, game. Let's try to do that. Doesn't look as balanced as before, yeah, that's too much. So let's uh, keep it at that. Of course, we're going to judge everything by the parades and vector scope, but also with our naked eye. So I was trying to get this uh, back wall to be a little bit neutral, maybe lean a little bit to the blue side. So this is what I tried. But I also kept in mind that this is the portion that I'm trying to make white not this one because this is a shadowy sign which is not really visible here so we need to keep that in mind once we have reached everything within the parades we can move to the uh vector scope and judge our saturation here is what we're gonna do i'm going to disable that and go to the vector scope and now go back and forth between them and see that well, maybe this is a little bit more saturated, maybe just a touch, maybe just a little bit. Why didn't I notice it in the beginning? Yeah, this is more like it. And then when we are done doing that, here is what we're going to do next. I have a look that I have here and I applied this look to this image. I watched it through. Make make sure that nothing is breaking, nothing is collapsing, that look is staying untouched, that everything is fine. And then I just grabbed a reference frame, a steel, in here. So I'll just right click, grab steel or press F13, which is not available on the keyboard, only available on the dedicated panel. But nonetheless, grab steel. Then we're gonna move to our next clip open our gallery, right click and append no, node graph. It means that it's not going to apply great. It is going to append all of these settings after the balance node, which is what we need. As we remember, our saturation was not that correct. Yeah, this is closer. So now our look applies perfectly because we balanced the image beforehand. So this is the basic rule. You need to balance the image before you apply any type of look, before you continue grading and coming up with any type of look. You need to apply a balance note before that. So what did I do in the in this look? You can watch several of my videos and understand what I'm typically doing with my looks. Links will be in the description. And for this video, this is everything that I wanted to say. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.